Today, we're going to be learning about World War II. The year is 1939. Hitler invades Poland from the west, and Stalin invades from the right. The German tanks, planes, and artillery storm the quiet Polish countryside in a hellfire of bullets, shells, and bombs. The world is at war again. But how did we get here? After World War I, the winning side of the war, Britain, France, Russia, and others, formed an alliance called the League of Nations, and they came together and made the Treaty of Versailles, which put all of the war's blame on the defeated country of Germany, which forced Germany to surrender all colonies in Africa, Asia, and the Pacific, give up territory to France and Poland, greatly reduce its military size, and they had to pay all of the reparations for the whole war, putting the nation in extreme debt. Germany went from this to this. Germany's newfound debt, plus the fact that much of their land had been given up, meant the country was greatly struggling economically. On top of this, the stock market crash of 1929 in the United States led to a worldwide Great Depression, which drove Germany into even more economic downturn. By the mid-1930s, the people of Germany were desperate. And when a loud, well-spoken leader by the name of Adolf Hitler was running campaigns and saying that he and his political party, the Nazis, could return Germany to greatness, he received extreme support from many desperate Germans. With extreme support from the German people and having been recently elected chancellor, Hitler began using his power to obtain his goal of German greatness. Hitler, like many Germans, was angry about the Treaty of Versailles, believing that it was extremely unfair toward Germany. He sought for a scapegoat for Germany's problems and chose to blame Jews. Hitler became a ruthless dictator, restricting Jewish businesses and stripping away any rights that the Jewish people had, forcing them to wear a Star of David, and throughout the war, he would arrest Jews and put them in work camps throughout the Nazis' territory. Hitler began disobeying the conditions of the Treaty of Versailles and started to build up a massive military, containing troops, tanks, artillery, ships, and an unmatched air force, to which the Allies did nothing. He had his army return to the demilitarized Rhineland, where he stated that they should immediately retreat if the Allies showed up. However, the Allies still did nothing. Now that Hitler had a strong military, he would move on to step two, which was to increase the population of the Aryan race, which he believed was superior, for which he would need living space. And to do that, he would need to conquer land and eventually take over the world. The Allies, finally starting to get a little worried, created a diplomatic system called appeasement, which had little effect on Hitler's goal to overtake the world, as in 1938, his army marched into Austria and took it with zero resistance. And took it with zero resistance. The Allies said that he could have that land, but no more from that point on. Next, he wanted to gain territory in Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland, which contained many ethnic Germans. The Allies gave it to him under the condition that he would promise not to invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Hitler, of course, signed, and he invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia. Hitler then made an official alliance with the Mussolini-led Italy, which had been building an empire of its own in Africa. Hitler then turned his attention toward Poland, and the Polish corridor that split Germany in two after the First World War. The Allies noticed this and had to do something about it, and they stated that an invasion of Poland would mean war. Hitler wanted to advance to the east, however, that would mean fighting a war on two fronts, so for now he decided to make a non-aggression pact with Stalin's Soviet Union and invade Poland with Stalin, each taking half. The Allies were surprised, and on September 1st, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland and Britain and France declared war. There was a short period of time called the Phony War, where everyone just kind of sat around and didn't do much. The French had started a small invasion in the Saarland, but after only having obtained defensive positions, they gave up and went home. They set up defenses along the German border. However, they did not extend the defense to the English Channel, and they would also not fire artillery in fear of the enemy fighting back. In Britain, Chamberlain still had hopes of ending the war through diplomacy, and used air raids to drop papers of propaganda on the German cities, 
which likely did nothing. Chamberlain also noticed that Sweden was exporting iron ore to Nazi Germany through Norway, so he asked them to stop, which they did not. When the Soviets invaded Sweden, Chamberlain suggested that he land troops in Norway to cross Sweden and help Finland with hopes of gaining control over Sweden's iron fields in the process. When this request was denied, Britain set up minefields along the Norwegian coast and attacked a German tanker. Hitler noticed this and moved to secure his oil, invading Norway through Denmark, and was able to use the Luftwaffe to force Allied retreat and secure control of Norway. From the beginning of the war up to 1941, it is starting to look like Germany might win this war, as they were able to swiftly take over France and most of mainland Europe, apart from Switzerland, which was neutral, and Britain, which had a solid defense in the form of the English Channel, which would be extremely difficult for Germany to set up an invasion over. Britain had been trying to convince the United States to join the war, however the U.S. had no intention of joining the war, while they did export weapons, materials, ammunition, money, and more to the Allies. This would all change for America, however, on December 7, 1941, where, in a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base in Pearl Harbor, conducted by the Japanese, saw 353 Japanese aircraft successfully torpedo bomb and sink 18 ships, as well as killing 2,403 U.S. personnel, including 68 civilians. The United States' three aircraft carriers were thankfully out at sea doing exercises during the attack, so they ended up being unharmed and available to come back and help with rescues and repairs. Nevertheless, the attack was enough for Franklin D. Roosevelt to declare war on Japan and join in the fight against the Nazis. Now, with the U.S. in the war, Hitler was in trouble, as he had already failed the invasion of the Soviet Union due to a harsh winter and a somewhat flawed strategy, and with millions of Allied troops gathering in England, the Germans knew an Allied invasion of Europe would come, but they didn't know where. The morning of June 6 saw thousands of ships sail in on the northern French coast, and thousands of troops landed on the beaches of Normandy. After much struggle and death, the Allies were able to capture the beaches and move inland, and a little over a year later, the Germans were forced to surrender, and Hitler, realizing this, is suspected to have ended his own life. Later that year, after a long, hard-fought battle in the Pacific between the U.S. and Japan, the U.S. decided that rather than risk a land invasion of mainland Japan, they would drop two atomic bombs on Japanese cities. On August 6, 1945, Hiroshima was leveled with a bomb the likes of which no one had ever seen, and Nagasaki would be hit later. The Emperor of Japan saw no way out but surrender, and on September 2nd, 1945, the Japanese surrenders, and the war was over. The violence had ended for now.